Semper Vivi and Filthy Tom Lawler here with you for the next hour talking about professional wrestling, which is something we do every single day here on the Sports Byline Broadcasting Network. Tune in iHeart, American Forces Radio, Cable Radio Network 2, SportsByline.com, over-the-air affiliates. Maybe you're listening via podcasting or video streaming on Twitch or YouTube. However you're joining me today, I'd just like to say thank you. Hopefully wherever you are, it's sunny outside. If not, hopefully it's sunny inside your mind. It's me and filthy Tom Lawler, as I said, so forget about Fun Friday. It's a filthy Friday. The big boss man, Brian Alvarez, will be back at some point next week. I, I, I really don't know. And then by Thursday, I guess he's out of here to jump on a plane to England so he can jump on a boat and do that special Wrestling Observer Radio with he and Dave before AEW All In next Sunday. But before we get there, we got a lot we're going to have to get through this weekend. And that begins tonight on SmackDown. Just one month to go before the show moves back to the USA Network. And two weeks to go before Bash in Berlin. Got Roman Reigns going to be on the show tonight. And that's really all you need right now. There's going to be other people as well. They have announced a card. And we'll preview the show for everybody after the break. Also tonight is AEW Rampage, and we'll give you the no spoilers preview, as well as taking a look at AEW Collision tomorrow. New Japan, the G1 Climax Tournament is wrapping up, and we'll get Filthy's expert analysis on what he thinks is going to go down here in the semifinals and final, as well as getting to the card editions, which he is going to be a part of at Capital Collision coming up on August 20th. And Bobby Lashley has been moved to the alumni section of WWE. Where may he go next? We'll get into that as well as I want to give Filthy some scenarios, lay those out to him and see which ones that he would take. I bet it's going to have to do with the most money. We'll see, though. We'll be back. Wrestling Observer Live. Welcome back to the show. Mike Semper, VB, and Filthy Tom Lawler here with you. We do this show right here for an hour at a time every single day, but if you want us 24-7, you can try to find us on Twitter slash X. I am at Semper, VB. Tom is at Filthy Tom Lawler. Brian is at Brian Alvarez. That's Brian with a Y. The website is at W-O-N-F-4-W, and the broadcaster is at Sports Byline USA. Jim Valley will be with you tomorrow, every Saturday at 1 p.m. Eastern Time, 10 a.m. Pacific. And on Sunday, Andrew Zarian joins you beginning at 6 p.m. Eastern, 3 p.m. Pacific. I'd like if you made the Wrestling News part of your day as well, wherever you find your favorite podcasts, or head on over to WrestlingNews.com and at WrestlingNewsAV on Facebook and Twitter. Every single day of the year, everything you need to know to get your day started, get you up to date, or get you to your favorite long-form review pod, like Wrestling Observer Radio, and there's going to be a new one of those up at some point this evening. Dave Meltzer and Garrett Gonzalez for subscribers of the website, and I'll let you know the many ways that you can become a subscriber to the site, or you can just go to f4wonline.com right now and find out for yourself. Filthy Tom Lawler, how was your Friday? Has it been a fun Friday for you, Filthy? So far, so good. I like what I'm hearing out of the other end of the microphone and the airwaves there, Mike. It's always nice to hear your voice. A huge weekend ahead of us in combat sports, and I am just chomping at the bit. We have something most of the listeners probably won't pay attention to. That's the Craig Jones Invitational and the Abu Dhabi Combat Club Submission Wrestling World Championships, both taking th place this weekend. I think if weekend. they got a look at Craig Jones and looked at some of his... Uh rather personable posts and, and things, you know, he could be a, he could be somebody a wrestling fan could, could either love or hate or both. Oh, he is, he is made for professional wrestling as is his arch nemesis, Gordon Ryan on the other end at Abu Dhabi. Also, we will have a big, big, big time championship fight tomorrow night when DDP Drakus Duplessis takes on Israel Adesanya. Taking out Adesanya? No. No? Two plus I'm eight? Not. Yeah. Hmm. But Mike, I know this isn't a strictly MMA show, so I've got to ask you, on behalf of the listeners, what do you want to talk about? Well, we should probably open this thing up by talking about the 
biggest professional wrestling organization in the world right now. I don't know if you've heard this or not, but WWE is hot. And they are going to be at Amway Arena. Amway. I just It will always blow me away. That has been a thing for so long. They were able to buy naming rights on a building. But it's in Orlando, Florida. Amazingly, to me, still, we're only one month away from SmackDown leaving Fox and returning to USA. Roman Reigns is going to be there with his OTC shirt on. Are you good with that one? Are you, are you good with the OTC thing? Yeah, I like Roman Reigns' motif. I like his look. I like the more sports kind of style that he has compared to, or I guess I, could, I should say in contrast to Cody Rhodes and his politician look. So, yeah, I like the OTC. You like the OTC more than the MFT that they couldn't get over because people weren't sure if they could say, you know, Mother Effin Tongan or whatever it was going to be for Tama Tonga there at first. I, I prefer, honestly, the infamous Tonga Loa to all of them. What do you think about Andrade and Mello 3? Because that takes place tonight. Andrade is 2-0 and in their previous two matches, but last week it was interference by Carmelo that cost Andrade the number one contendership match for LA Knight's United States title. So I would figure that Mello would get the victory here. Would Am I crazy for that? One would think that Mello would be walking away the victor. Uh, one thing it's for sure is that if they give them time, that this match will be on the verge of being spectacular. They've had two encounters so far. They've made the most of what they were given both times. And I'm looking forward to seeing a third match and maybe a fourth, maybe a fifth, maybe a sixth, maybe even a best of seven. Uh, you know, uh, that feels like the direction that it's going. And I got to be honest, Magnum TA, Nikita Koloff, Booker T., and uh and uh Brett da, 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 da. you know or i'm sorry chris ben yeah well yeah <laughs> but, sorry about that but uh see that's how i already tried to block that one out of my memory had to put another canadian in there to try to soften the blow but i actually like the best of seven series and they usually you know they they usually work so if that's the direction they're going to go good plus it's okay to burn some time too because la knight can have another title defense but carmelo I, and I, I would not want to do this in Saudi Arabia, but I believe that's where they are in October. But I would prefer they wait till Survivor Series. But Carmelo getting a big victory and getting a win over LA Knight, I like the idea of them feuding. And I also like the idea of Carmelo defeating LA Knight for that title at some point down the line. But we got to get through tonight first. WWE Tag Team Title Number 1 Contenders Match. Johnny Gargano and Tommaso Ciampa against the Street Profits. Two babyface tag teams there. You see Gargano and Ciampa turning just to do something different? Uh, no, I, I think the Street Profits are going to win uh, fair and square. I don't think that there's much in the way for plans for the tag division underneath of the tag titles right now. You could see, like, Pretty Deadly just keeps wallowing around, trying to get people to be in their musical backstage. The Street Profits really don't get pushed that hard. I think they'll get the win here tonight but because the, the bloodline we, needs somebody to beat. Well, maybe, I guess, but like Candice LeRae, I guess. I don't, I don't know. To me, like, I, you can probably wait on doing bloodline and street profits at some point, too, where there's going Mike, to have to be somebody else in that mix there because it's not like the street profits and bloodline, I wouldn't think, would be mixing it up every single week. No, but I think that right now, DIY is maybe the hottest that they've been, you know, over the past few weeks coming off of just simply being the champions in Cleveland uh, and, and being that high up, being in the main event on SmackDown in Gargano's hometown. I mm -hmm. thought they got a good reaction last week. And, you know, I think that there's still more juice you can squeeze out of them as baby faces on the SmackDown side, but they just lost the belt. So I think now you give Street Profits the shot the Street Profits lose to the Bloodline, and then maybe you could have DIY challenge once again. It is really too bad that Jacob Fatu is out right now. Kayfabe, real, whatever, it doesn't matter. The fact that Tonga Lo is in that mix, and I'm not trying to throw shade at him. Everybody does, but the matchup between the Street Profits and Tama Tonga and Jacob Fatu is great, is great. 
because Montez and Tama, you know, that's a perfect combination. And, you know, so is it the other way as well, too. You know, with those two guys running into each other at top speed. So, you know, Dawkins and Fatu. So I love that angle. If they, again, we'll see what happens tonight. It makes sense, like you're saying, for the Street Profits to get the victory. We also got Naomi against Blair Davenport, which has been a slow-moving feud that's been attached to somebody else's feud. Also, Kevin Owens against Grayson Waller. And then Tiffany Stratton will throw a celebration for not only not only your everybody out there, not only yours, but especially Filthy Tom Lawler's brand new WWE Women's Champion, Nia Jax. And you Ready? forgot the most important title. The queen. Out of all of that, the queen. The queen. Nia Jax, who Tiffany Stratton better heed the warnings of Chelsea and Piper Niven, and she better not try to cash in on Nia because if she does, she's going to get annihilated. She's going to go down the hole. Whose hole? Yeah. Not touching that one. Nah, I know you're not. I do like also the idea, even though it's probably, you know, I'm sure that Chelsea and and uh, Piper. Piper there have fans, huge fans, and want to see them, you know, out there all the time. But I actually like them being kind of hated by everybody and bashing heads with everybody in the women's locker room. Got a lot more to get into when we get back from break. Wrestling Observer Live. A bit longer. Mike Semper, maybe Filthy Tom Lawler here with you. Wrestling Observer Live, the Filthy Friday edition. They are great in concert, by the way, Mike. Really? Yeah, saw them earlier this year. Phenomenal. Every single member was good. Even young, dirty bastard. <laughs> Did you have a chance to see them back in the day? The only chance, I think no. they may have done like a, a festival type of thing, like a Lollapalooza or something like that. I may have seen them at, but it was... It was Wu-Tang Clan, Rage Against the Machine, and Atari Teenage Riot at the Meriwether Post Pavilion in Columbia, Maryland. That was awesome. That was an awesome, awesome show. Yeah, that sounds fantastic. Instead, I got just a straight two hours of Wu-Tang, so I'm not going to complain. There's nothing wrong with that. Now, they did, did they do Gravel Pit? Yep. They did all their biggest hits. Each. Uh, now, I'm not going to say each member because, like, you God didn't get up there and do his solo hits. That's that's but, that's okay. That's good. But it's good. Ghostface, Method please. Man, yeah, all the heavy hitters got up there and had a little solo section as well. So, and Ray, like everybody was there. Yeah, even I young mean, dirty bastard. I mean, with the exception bastard. of like ODB and such. Yeah, young and dirty Reza bastard. Jizza, everybody, everyone, young except for Capadonna, who you can make a i guess you could make a case for being the 10th member but yeah the only one who wasn't there was old dirty bastard who was you know replaced by his legitimate son one of the few of many children like you have many children throughout the state of florida where monday night raw is going to be sunrise florida where the florida panthers play the fla live arena they're also going to be running two house shows this weekend saturday and sunday in lakeland and fort myers florida uh there was an interview with steve austin uh with the adrian hernandez podcast where steve austin talked about uh confirmed at least all of the reports and rumors that were out there about him being close to appearing at wrestlemania 40 it obviously didn't happen. The Undertaker filled his position alongside John Cena in making appearances to try to uh, fend off the bloodline during Cody Rhodes' match. But Austin hopes to be at WrestleMania 41. There was a part of me that wants to read off the front page and do my best Stone Cold Steve Austin impression. I'm not going to do that. But considering that he's got a ranch located in Nevada, Allegiant Stadium isn't far away, and... The biggest star on that show is going to be The Rock, his number one generational rival. Aren't we going to have to see Stone Cold Steve Austin be involved in WrestleMania 41? And would you be disappointed if he wasn't? I would. Uh, Mike, where was WrestleMania this past year? Do you remember? It was in... It was Tampa. Where the hell was it? 
I can't even remember now. I didn't go. Was it SoFi Stadium? Was it in L.A.? Hmm. Because I, you know what? I, I don't honestly be, don't even remember. I believe oh, we're still... I believe where Stone Cold, old Stone Cold Steve Austin lives is like, it's not that close. Oh, Philadelphia, duh. That's what it was. It was Philadelphia. Ah, uh, yeah. The I guess Liberty it is a lot closer nonsense. to Philadelphia, but, you know, it's not that close. It's an eight-hour drive, which I guess if you're, you know, he can make it to the other coast quicker on an airplane, but I guess we'll see him. Who cares? I want to see him. I mean, look. Yeah, I, sure, I, I do. Boston. I mean, if I have a choice of seeing Stone Cold or not on WrestleMania, I'll take it. Now, but okay, I'm not going to lose sleep over him being there or not. I'll make up in my mind this long-standing feud between Rock and Undertaker again if I have to. I don't want to see that. I don't want to see The Rock or Undertaker, and I need to see The Rock out of there really quickly after WrestleMania. So how better to do that than with Steve Austin? But can you take both of them if you also have to have Paul Levesque at some point coming out there being all Triple H-y? Think he's past that? I, I think so. Nah. Nick Khan think... out there? No, nah, never mind. That wouldn't happen. The wrath of Khan. The wrath of Khan. The Kagan of Khans to be crowned. Bobby Lashley has been moved to the alumni page of WWE.com. And that's notable because that means all the reports of him not being resigned and or leaving WWE were true. And that leads to this question, Filthy. If you are Blaster Lashley, do you try to take the safe big money in AEW, which will tie you up for at least two years? Or do you go the path of pulling a Brock Lesnar, go to Japan, because to me he's got some leverage and there's not like there's a ton of stars over there? Or do you just hook up with MVP and Omas and do some barnstorming, do some GCW, some blood sport, and take big money and then just keep it moving. What would you do in this situation with him, if you were him? Where money is no issue and you can do what you want. If I were Bobby Lashley, I would just lift weights in Colorado or wherever he's hanging out just and have fun with Crystal? for the rest of his life. I mean, he's had an MMA career. He's had a pro wrestling career. I don't know what else... He- he, he he certainly doesn't need to accomplish anything else. I can say that. <clears throat> Whether he wants to accomplish more things, obviously it seems like he does. Yeah. Uh, it seemed like he had unfinished business in his mind in WWE. You know, AEW is the other the other show in town, uh, but I don't really know where he would fit in there. I don't really see it. I guess uh, he could go to Japan. Sure, any promotion there would be dying to have Bobby Lashley on their roster or making you know appearances for them uh if you were going to do that though probably the option that would pay the most and we talked about this off the air would be Risen taking an MMA fight you know obviously he was a a fighter in the past for Bellator uh so we could see him you know getting back in the cage maybe where the competition over in Japan for the heavier fighters is not as competitive. It's not as good as it is around the rest of the world. So that, besides retirement, would be my choice if I were old Blaster Lashley. So you really think it's time to just pack it on up, drive back to Colorado, be with a the beautiful wife, and, and just live a beautiful life for for till the end here? You know, you would fight the urge to want to take some of that big AEW money or have some fun there throwing around Josh Barnett in Japan during a blood sport show. Yeah, I just told you what I would do. He can go <laughs> throw around Bobby Oligan in Risen for some money. You know, would you fight that, it? That would Look, if choice. you were him, is there any amount of money? Is there any amount of money in the world at this point in his life where he could be? forget about a worked fight but an actual mma fight because i'm sure somebody would offer it that's what i'm talking about i know that but (laughs) christ but still i mean like legitimately though if you're him honestly can you picture that yeah i Hmm. think so he's he's defied i guess you know physics (laughs) i don't even know what to say defied age physics everything 
and if he was into such wisdom. a thing, and granted, he is a natural, you know, physical wonder and everything, but it's not like also in Japan, if he did need to, to you know, take some extra vitamins, not like they ever cared about any of that. It was just making sure you showed up and were upright, even if that was, you know, barely the case in some cases, but we'll move away from that, get to everyone's favorite, television ratings. Numbers are in for this past Wednesday night's AEW on TBS. And with the Olympics over with, the rating came back up to over 700,000, 703,000 people on average, up from 622,000 last week. The number was helped dramatically by regaining people 18 to 34. And last Friday, I think I said 50%. It was a 100% drop that they had had from the week before in males 18 to 34. Whatever had them for that week, they all came back this week, about 88% of them. So the number came back up. 18 to 49-year-old demo, a 0.23 or 305,000 people. AEW Rampage is tonight on TNT. Matches taped Wednesday in Norfolk. No spoilers here. The conglomeration, Mark Briscoe, Orange Cassidy, and Tomohiro Ishii against the Outrunners and the Butcher. Nyla Rose against Erica Lee. Nick Wayne against Kip Sabian, Kyle Fletcher and Roosh against KM. I guess it, who, who would that be? Uh, Kyle Kevin Matthews. Matthews. And, Kevin Matthews, I'm sorry. And Rhett Titus. Oh, t- Rhett Titus still out there grinding away. I love it. And Top Flight, who have Action Andretti and my new favorite character, Stewardess Layla Gray, in their corner against the M&M connection, uh, collection excuse me, of Mansoor and Mason Madden. Are you excited for this, Filthy? Or will you be one of the 298,000 people who tune in tonight? The AEW card looks po- pretty easy to predict, <laughs> I'll say. What, what if they added Mina Shirakawa late? You know what? If they, if they I, Mike, I mean, I told you earlier, I talked about it. I'm going to be watching the Craig Jones Invitational at that time. So if they threw out... If they had Mackenzie Dern take on Fionn Davies or Craig Jones take on Gabby Garcia live on Rampage, I'd be tuning in. But as sad Gabby as it Garcia. is, as sad as sad as it is, the the highest paying professional wrestling competition of the weekend won't even get covered. So, but that's what I'll be watching. AEW Collision Saturday TNT Esports Arena in Arlington. That is pretty much it. That's it, right? That pretty much wraps up that AEW World Tag Team Title Number One Contendership Match. FTR and the Acclaimed is the only thing that I have seen mentioned so far for that show. Maybe I'll check during break. Maybe I won't. Maybe we'll talk about bare knuckle fighting during break. I think we're going to end up doing that. Mike Sembervivi, Filthy Tom Lawler, Wrestling Observer Live. That's what that was all about. Filthy. Your bare knuckles. Usually you throw down in New Japan Pro Wrestling. Actually, you throw you throw down everywhere. And I was actually thinking to myself, do you know how bad it would have been for Brutus Creed? You were so close. You were so close. That if you could have beaten him at Bloodsport and then lost to uh, Paul Walter Hauser in the MMA match in MLW, like, by default, you know, that would mean Paul Walter Hauser uh, is over Brutus Creed. Hey, well, let me give you a little inside information about both these gentlemen, is that they both barfed in, their, like, one, one of them barfed before the match and one of them barfed after the match. So, and, and you were there not quite... to see this. Did you laugh? Oh, how could you not? I mean, <laughs> p- part, of, part of me was distraught. <laughs> like, what is going on here? But, yeah. Well, the one that did it before the match, was it because of fear out of facing you? I believe so. Makes sense. Hopefully you and Fred have some fear instilled into those turncoats, Jarrell Nelson and Hoyce Isaacs. Is he still Hoyce, or now that everything has gone down, has he been reduced to just being plain old Royce, no 5'9"? <laughs> he's, he definitely does not get the 5'9 moniker. Not, uh, not revered 
on the microphone at all, <laughs> whether it's oh. rapping or just cutting a promo. This guy can't even put a can't even put a sentence together. He's over there with his his cheese and wine, sounding like a violin. <laughs> like Royce and Jarrell are gonna get a beat down at Capital say, Collision. Can you just not wait to punch both of them right in the face? That's really I you know, I'm not saying jumpstart. I'm saying do it all by the books. Wait till the bell rings, but just go over and punch them both in the face. I know Fred's got to want to at this point. I, Look at the abuse Fred's been through. I'd love to punch every single person that I've seen on this card in the face. Zack Sabre, I'm still sick of looking at his face. He's wrestling Hechicero, who I would love to punch him in the face, but I want to see his face first because I have no clue what he looks like. You got Gabe Kidd over there disgracing the New Japan Strong title online. Can you imagine, could you imagine the first ever holder of that New Japan Strong title begging Mercedes Monet for an autograph online? Said, said, no. No. What a disgrace this guy is. <sighs> I thought he was supposed to be out there macking. Remember he was, you know, out there at the... He's uh, lacking. The, yeah, the the morning interview, he was, you know, the, the talking himself up. I mean, I thought he had a great performance there. Find out it's all lies. Find out he's a little soft inside. Find out that he's just a little fanboy still. And that's probably why he did as poor as he did in the G1. I thought he was going to have a breakout performance. Maybe you need to slap some sense into him backstage there, too, when everybody gets into D.C. on the 20th. Yeah, speaking of that G1, mm -hmm. we have the semifinals coming up. Saturday night? We do. Is that our Saturday night? Or uh, Japan Saturday night? Japan Saturday night or something so like that, would, that. I don't know. We'll know tomorrow morning. Put a deal like that. It's either tonight or tomorrow. It's either going to happen tonight or tomorrow. Or tomorrow. But, Actually, it's going to be tomorrow. tomorrow. Tonight, okay. tomorrow, whatever. Go ahead. This would you like to segment. talk about the matchups? Yeah. Yeah. <clears throat> Well, what are they? Climax, go ahead. Block A final. I believe it's Zack Sabre Jr. who won this block with 14 points. Is that correct? That is Taking correct. on Shingo Takagi. Yes. And on the other side would be David Finlay and Yoda Suji. And I am going to make the call right now that we will have... Yoda Suji walk out as the winner of the G1 2024. He will win the New Japan Cup this year. He will win the G1, defeating Shingo Takagi in the finals. The second in command, I guess you would say, of LIJ. And then at the Tokyo Dome, he will beat Tetsuya Naito and usurp him as the number one guy in New Japan. I think that only makes sense. It really does. And Zack Sabre Jr. and Suji in the final, I mean, Sabre can make Suji look fantastic and can take him the half hour that this match is probably going to go and to be a feather in Yoda Suji's cap and try to give him just another little oomph up. You know, especially at a time when Umino's hurting, they did their best with so, Arita throughout this tournament. But you, you think know, Zach's Suji beating the guy? You think Zach's beating Shingo? I think he is. Be although I do like the idea of the story. To me, there's a story there because Shingo already beat Naito once. Shingo and Suji, you got two Lij guys who, at the end, Naito can come in the ring. Look at these two guys after he's lost a bunch of matches. After it's been played up, the fact that he can't do the Destino or he has problems with it, it's a long way to the dome, and he's lost to some guys. And it's that could be a to me a really interesting story if they go, want to go ahead and tell it that way. I don't know if they will though, because again, Zack Saber Jr. With what Shingo went through with the Okan and him, you know, with his arm and everything, yeah, he could maybe overcome Zack Saber. But I think they used that as a way for Saber. You know, he's going to have a you know a weak spot to end up ultimately getting his victory. And I think he's the right guy to maybe 
again, drag Yoda Suji. And again, not that, you know, the man comes with handles or anything like that. When he's in there with guys, he can hold up his end of the deal. But, you know, again, he's so young and he's had so much, you know, he hadn't had that kind of experience yet where he could really stand to me to use Zack Sabre Jr. to help get him over in this thing. And to me, Finley and Sabre winning, again, in this year where New Japan is supposed to be homegrown and Hiroshi Tanahashi and we're pushing these young guys and you kind of sort of saw that in the G1 tournament you know the the idea of two foreigners you know it's hard for me to believe that one of them is not going to make the final yeah I mean I guess you could have obviously you could have Zach win Zach is the I guess bigger scalp in the G1 for Suji than Shingo would be you could go back later. I don't, who won between Shingo and Naito in the block? Do you remember? Shingo. Shingo. So you could always go back to, I guess, a battle f- between Shingo and Naito for the belt. You could have Suji and Shingo face off. You could hold off Shingo. And maybe, you know, Suji wins the title from Naito and then Shingo's his first defense. But no matter which way you look at it, I think when you add all of those elements in there, it's some pretty damn good matches are going to come out of the top of this New Japan Pro Wrestling card for the yeah, rest you know, of this year. The G1 was, if you're a hardcore New Japan fan, you were disappointed in a way because I think they you wanted to see more Gabe Kidd rather than like Ren Narita making a run to the finals. You didn't want to see so much Evil House of Torture stuff, but they didn't actually put Evil in. They didn't put Ren Narita in. And... Again, they could treat some of their younger guys maybe a little bit better here, but hopefully they do have that going forward because Hanare is a guy that I think, again, smart move to kind of get him going because he's a guy that to me is exportable very easily to come to the States for an AEW show or the New Japan shows like Capital Collision. Yeah, for sure. Hanare is a guy that, I, you know, he's hard hitting. His wrestling style translates you know very well to both continents japan and here as well um i had a point to make and i forgot it because you brought up hanare <laughs> see look at that where are you staying by the way uh when you come for uh to dc because i can oh, tell for, you where yeah. you should stay <laughs> delmarva no, well, yeah, I mean, you can, you can come here if you want. I'm, I'm not going to be going anywhere. Just like, no, we're not going to be doing that that day. She had already taken off, and whatever she's got planned, it's it, it's got nothing to do with New Japan and D.C., so I'm jealous. But Gallaudet University, I'm telling you, the Kellogg Conference Hotel on Florida Avenue in Northeast, it's like a 25-minute Uber away from the sports arena, right? Just straight south, like six, seven miles, but it is so much better than staying on that side. And because it's Gallaudet, it's relatively quiet because, you know, it's it's a deaf university. Not that everybody there is deaf and everybody there working there is deaf, but it is a nice little, I'm telling you, it is a great place to stay. If you ever need to actually go there for any reason, which you do, that's where you should stay. Where else, where are they putting you up? I guarantee you it's not the Marriott. Have you been dying this for the past 50 minutes to get that out? No. To bring up this Gallaudet University and the deaf joke? I've stayed really? there. No, this I'm is not almost, telling you. This is almost as bad. i a couple times. Mike, this is almost as bad as all the people complaining about the new WWE themes when they don't realize that the guy making them is deaf. Like deaf, like deaf jam? Like Deaf rebel. Oh, Wow. No, I, no, I have not made a deaf joke Lord. since... Good Lord. I haven't made a deaf joke since Mark Hamill, thank you I very made, much. I made that same... Matt Hamill? You mean? Matt Hamill. Been- <laughs> I made that same joke on air with Lance and Brian, and it fell perhaps on even more, you know... It, it, it fell flat even more so than it did here, <laughs> put it that way. Did you see, uh, did you see Matt Hamill... Challenged, I haven't seen Matt Hamill in years, actually. He challenged John Jones to a rematch. He said, <laughs> "He said Dana White, John Jones, if you want to get that that one erased, should give me a rematch." 
the only man to beat him. I, are you kidding me? By DQ, all, all all back in the day. I remember he used to make you know have some Matt Hamill jokes and stuff like that. All fun spirited, you know. But he's out there cutting promos, and I would mimic his promos and everything. I bought one box of UFC cards one time, and it's like, all right, what autograph am I going to get here? It was like you know they had Brock Lesnar and you know all these people, and it was like, damn it, if I didn't get Matt Hamill. That was the, the one I got. <laughs> it's like, well, that figures. That figures. Hey, former winner of the Ultimate Fighter, right? What did, what did he go out there? That? I believe it was a long two. Long time ago now. And then he went out there two or three, and then he, did he beat Tito Ortiz? Did he end up beating his coach from the show? I can't remember. Later on, <laughs> I can't. There's been so many of them now. I remember when the thing started, how big of a deal it was, and to hear them, they blanketed radio stations like the all news station in dc wtop they had bumpers during the sports where you know someone was absolutely harmed in the making of this episode and they did such a good job with spike and all that stuff it is amazing in hindsight vince has always been such a bastard you hear about dana white offering things to him and wanting to do things and vince shooting him down and he never gets upset with it but if vince would have shot down the ultimate fighter on spike how long? I think we would have still gotten to this point, but it would have been tough to do, I think. I wouldn't be here. That's true. We'll be back, Wrestling Observer Live. Number BB, Filthy Tom Lawler here with you. You know, a lot of you guys go, well, you're talking about mixed martial arts. You're talking about football. You're talking about betting. You're talking about this or that. Wow, I don't like that. I want you to only talk about wrestling. Fine. Here, here's a wrestling story for you, and it's annoying. Tony Khan believes that WWE is still engaging in contact tampering with AEW talent. The alleged tampering became an issue in 2022 when Khan says that many AEW wrestlers came to him claiming that WWE reached out trying to get them to break their contracts. At the time, Khan's mother was in the hospital recovering from a stroke. Khan has said that's when business became personal between him and WWE. He said that all on the Dan Levitard show today. Uh, and when he was asked if the tampering situation has gotten better since then, he said, I don't think it has. I think that it's still happening, and I will reserve all rights when it comes to that. But I don't think it's stopped, and I'll leave it at that. Comes because, obviously, the Lucha Brothers and the talk about Phoenix and uh, Penta going to WWE very quickly look business is business so i understand it from their point of view i understand it from the athlete's point of view do you let somebody go from their contract who's got injury time because they want to get out of there sometimes isn't it just better to let somebody go i think it depends if you have you know plans for them and how that's you know factored in to the future uh if it's a situation in which you know fenix is going to be there alone while Penta is in a different brand and he's, you know, unhappy, there serves no pers purpose in keeping a person like that around. And we've seen it go, you know, reportedly both ways with AEW. We've seen people unhappy go away. We've seen them stick around and then seemingly become happy once again. So, as you said, business is business. This business, however, is over. This piece of business is done, folks time to get to the beach it's nice out there i'm going to the beach filthy i want to thank you very much for stepping in hopefully you're going to be around a little bit next week before you go kick ass in dc i want to thank producer john i want to thank producer daniel i want to thank this cough i have for not coming out on the microphone and i want to thank all of you out there for listening and watching us today f4wonline.com wrestlingobserver.com that's where you need to go we shall talk to you all again after a while.